appearances that will try and reframe that argument. Van, how was this for step one? Well, I mean, <clears throat> if he was uh, weak and uncertain last week, he's the opposite this week. Uh, that was strong. That was clear. Uh, that was decisive. Uh, and it was history making in its own way. Um, it is very unusual for a president to be that direct. Uh, I dissent uh, in the face of a Supreme Court uh, decision. But I think he's uh, pointing to a fear and an alarm that exists in this country right now because it does look like the Supreme Court just handed a license for lawlessness to whoever happens to be in the Oval Office. And if Donald Trump, who ran over every norm, every rule, every tradition before when he thought he might face consequences, what would he do now? And so this is not a, a tangential issue to the, president, to the presidential campaign. It, the Supreme Court just uh, threw down the gauntlet and said a president can be as lawless as he wants to be, and that makes this ch a choice much more stark. I think that um, uh, that Joe Biden that we just saw, talking about character, talking about judgment, talking about American tradition, talking about uh, uh, George Washington, is the Joe Biden that deserves to win. And the question is, is the public going to see that Joe Biden uh, as the, the guy they're voting for or the person from last week? That's the question. We know that they can be independent and not be um, sort of um, have a norm of not, in fact, obeying what the president says you have to do. Uh, I, I think the whole piece of this where the legal intersects actually collides violently with the political is that in 2016, Tr Trump was you could you could go back and say maybe there were other reasons to run in 2024. That's not the case. The only reason he's running is for retribution. And the only way Trump defines retribution is official. Mm -hmm. He wants to use official acts. Yes, that's he got, right. And so for, for he Trump, want private like, like, for, forget about the league, like, <laughs> yeah, right, right. right. Forget about us. Forget about the, the free press's analysis of something that the justices actually wrote down and put in writing, which is that we do now have a king. That's radical and amazing. But we also have a guy running for president who is today ahead in the polls, who is running to take official acts to seek out, in his words, retribution against his political enemies. He is only interested in the official parts of the job. And he only ever was. I mean, the only reason he wanted a Roy Cohn, to pick up on Rachel's point, is so that he could have someone architect the White House right. around officially right. seeking out punishment for his enemies. 2017, there was a story in the New York Times that he wanted to prosecute Hillary Clinton. He fires Jim Comey because he doesn't, quote, see to it to let Mike Flynn go, let Mike Flynn go. He only ever wanted to commit crimes disguised as official acts. Yeah, I mean, I think he said this publicly a thousand times to Nicole's point. And I was reading today, uh, if anybody's following along on the lovely Project 2025 plan <laughs> on page 560. This is the first line of that of that part. The next conservative administration should embrace the Constitution yep. and understand the obligation of the executive branch to use its independent resources and authorities to restrain the excesses of both the legislative and judicial branches. This is the plan that Steve Bannon has been holding up in his recent interviews before he went to jail today, of course, to say this is what we're going to do. And the justices, what they did today is basically, I mean, I worked for two presidents, Nicole worked for a president. You haven't needed this immunity in the past. There have been bad things that have happened under presidents. I'm not, but like they haven't. They've right, been but they've done the bad things even without. They've done right, the bad yeah, things exactly. Even without, nobody's <laughs> walking around waiting for the immunity. The presidents yeah. I worked for didn't wait, didn't need, yeah. didn't look for the immunity. And now you have the person. So you're asking the American public, to Rachel's point, to vote for people and trust the presidents they elect will have the minor morality and the benevolence to not abuse. That's essentially what they're doing. So the very bad news for Donald Trump in this decision today and for candidate Trump, very, very bad, is that Mike Pence is going to walk into a federal courtroom, raise his right hand, take an oath to tell the truth and testify against Donald Trump in this case in September. It's going to happen much faster. You're than saying it's an evidentiary hearing. Absolutely. To just, to just so what determine. this is, what this is, is we've created an absolute immunity on one paragraph of the indictment, exactly applying to exactly one paragraph of the indictment. All of the rest of the indictment goes back to Judge Chutkin's courtroom and she schedules this. This Supreme Court has ordered her to have a hearing. Yep about the evidence in the case to determine whether the act in question is an official act, whether it might have some kind of protection or not. And that's for 
everything in the case except for one conversation that he had with the acting attorney general. It, the Department so of what, Justice. So yeah. what you're looking at here is uh, basically there'll be some briefs on each side, and then the judge will schedule a day and say, okay, we start today. Uh, Mr. Smith, who's your first witness? And it's exactly mm. like a prosecution. Mm. And for ja what Jack Smith's going to have to do, and, and sometimes in pretrial evidentiary stuff, prosecutors don't want to turn over all their cards. He's going to have to turn over every single one of them because the Supreme Court has said to him, in effect, we need to see every single one of your cards. So every witness he has, he's going to bring into that that courtroom. They're all going to be under oath and the defense is going to be able to cross examine them. The defense probably won't bring in any witnesses at all. But you're going to see this incredible January 6th hearing on steroids, possibly for six, eight weeks, September, October, maybe. Quickly, Andrew, does that do you think that's going to happen? Yeah, there's there. I'd always thought the, the sort of silver lining, but it's a small one because the big picture here is this decision is horrendous for American democracy. But Lawrence is right. There is going to be a hearing and the Supreme Court has actually said there has, has to, to be. be. Mm -hmm. So and it and obviously there's going to be a lot of fighting about the timing of it. But Judge Chutkin does not have to wait the 81 days that she mm -hmm. said she would wait for the trial. This is a hearing so she can have briefing and she can set up a hearing with witnesses are called. Joy, just before we, we, we go to break, the, the, there's also the, to your point earlier about the sort of clarity of this or, or the stakes. I, the, the one thing I was thinking about, too, and this is Rachel's point, is just how clarifying this is about the stakes of the election. To the extent there's some activating small d democratic energy that can be brought out of what I think is a genuinely appalling <laughs> move by the court. I wonder <laughs> if you feel the same way about that. It's very clarifying. Uh, they might as well uh, have added, uh, by the way, please Google Project 2025, because we are essentially authorizing and not just authorizing, really sort of calling on Donald Trump. They repeatedly talk about bold and decisive action. Yeah. Well, what bold and decisive action do they have in mind? Probably the exact same bold and decisive action the Heritage Foundation would run afoul of the Supreme Court's opinion today. So like testimony from Hope Hicks or, or what exactly do you mean? No, I mean, there were, uh, for example, tweets from President Trump's official Twitter account that were entered into evidence at trial. Uh, President Trump's Twitter account has been held by numerous courts to be in, uh, during his time as president uh, to be an official communications instrumentality of the White House. Uh, so those sorts of things would be official acts under the Supreme Court's ruling today. And therefore, they were not admissible as evidence in that New York trial. Do you think it'll actually warrant a new trial, though, in New York? I think it certainly should. I think it just adds to the uh, vast number of irregularities and, and unconstitutional aspects uh, of that trial that took place in New York. We're obviously looking forward to vigorously challenging that trial verdict on numerous grounds. This is just another ground that I think uh, adds to the clamor uh, in, in terms okay. of overturning that verdict. I'm a little skeptical, but we'll... Today, on a different bid for accountability, Steve Bannon reporting to federal prison in Connecticut for defying a January 6th committee subpoena. He's sentenced to four months, meaning Bannon will get out just days before the November 5th election. Bannon is the second Trump ally convicted for criminal contempt of Congress, along with Peter Navarro. Bannon recently spoke to NBC's Vaughn Hilliard, vowing retaliation. In his Justice Department, to do what they should do to start investigations of how the Justice Department weaponized the, the legal system against the MAGA movement and President Trump and President Trump and his followers. There's going to be plenty of time for that. Joining me now is Josh Green, national correspondent with Bloomberg and the author of Devil's Bargain, Steve Bannon, Donald Trump and the storming of the presidency. Josh, it's good to have you here as we speak. You and I, Steve Bannon is literally finally behind bars. Your reaction? Yeah. You know, my, my first reaction is it sort of makes the book's title, Devil's Bargain, feel even more poignant. Mm. Uh, you know, what I wrote about back then was sort of how this partnership had come together. But I say in the book that most of Donald Trump's business partners end up unhappy. Uh, and here, here Steve Bannon is uh, headed off to federal prison. Uh, but that being said, you know, he's as he is prone to do, turned it into a media circus. He's using it, I think, to try and amplify and enhance his brand. And, you know, every indication he's given publicly uh, is that this is a great thing and sort of furthers his story, as we heard in that clip, 
uh, that the Biden Justice Department is somehow persecuting uh, Trump-friendly Republicans. Yeah, and so, Josh, we hear Bannon's vow several times, including right then with Von Hilliard, that the retaliation is the plan. I mean, plain as day, right? They don't try to hide it. And yet your thoughts now, considering what the Supreme Court just ruled today in terms of this kind of cloak of official acts being able to be used to provide immunity. So if retaliation is the name of the game, it sounds like the Supreme Court just said, Steve Bannon, Donald Trump, here you go. Yeah, I think so. I mean, look, usually when Bannon says these kind of things, he's looking to provoke a a reaction. He's looking to get media attention. I'm pretty sure that was the case here. Uh, Certainly, Trump would have more leeway to retaliate if that's what he decides uh, he wants to do if he gets elected. Uh, But I do think for Bannon, like the fact that he's going off to jail is sort of not the way he would write the script himself if he could. Uh, But the fact that it's only a four month sentence, it could have been longer. Uh, I was talking to an ally of his before the sentencing who said, listen, if the sentence is less than Steve month, uh, six months, what I expect is for Bannon to sort of treat himself as if he were Nelson Mandela, a political prisoner. Uh, and sure enough, that's what we saw on, this, on the steps of, of the prison today as he was going in, treating this, putting himself into this narrative of Trump MAGA world persecution, which I think he believes will enhance his brand, will enhance uh, the image of him as loyal foot soldier to Trump. Uh, you know, and ultimately redound to his benefit, at least in a kind of media MAGA world sense. And then there's this idea, uh, Steve Bannon telling Vaughn Hilliard that Donald Trump is a moderate, using the phrase moderate when it comes to MAGA. And yet, to the point that you just made, Peter Navarro, Steve Bannon, some of the 1-6 riders, right? They're the only ones that are doing jail time for a moderate Donald Trump? Well, you know, I, I think when you look at, at, at what's going on here, um, you know, Bannon uh, taking pride in the fact that he'd been sentenced to prison, it's almost as if prison time has become a new badge of honor or a sort of mark of loyalty to, to you know, true fealty to Donald Trump. Navarro has- So folks, you saw that worst nightmares for Trump coming true on the political and legal side. As people are noting, more and more folks are saying, that this ruling isn't quite as good for Trump as he thinks. And there might even be some bad news in there from very respected journalists and analysts with, frankly, a lot more decades of experience than I have. Uh, And so I think that's quite encouraging. You also see that Biden's speech tonight is getting a lot of praise, including from some of the same people that, let's be honest, trashed his performance a few nights ago. So these are not people that are you know, going to praise Biden no matter what. Some of them were basically saying doom and gloom 72 hours ago, however long it's actually been. I lose track of the days, but you know what I mean? Like, and, and, and now Biden is coming out strong and you even have people on CNN, again, a network that basically, I'm going to say this, uh, if not rig the debate in Trump's favor, then set up the conditions to allow Trump to basically bully his way through it. Even they are like, well, I'm skeptical that that this is going to have anything to to, to do with his recent hush money conviction, that uh, there's no plausible way the immunity arguments can be applied there. And as also noted, the political side here for Trump, it's it's it, Biden continues to develop a bit of strength even after that shaky performance. So again, Trump thought the legal side, the political side, the personal side was all going to create this new opportunity for him, but four brand new nightmares all in a few minutes.